What is cracking, y'all? Welcome back to Boo TV. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified whenever we upload a new video. All right, shout out to, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right, Zeddy or Zeddy Perry the Fourth, who requested a video, said, can you do a video on Kobe's 2001 playoff run? It's funny that he said that because that was actually one of the things on my list. But since he specifically requested it, I bumped it up the list and here we are going to do an overview of that epic, legendary Lakers slash Kobe slash Slack playoff run. All right. So just to preface things before we get into the playoffs, if you remember at the beginning of that season, Shaq and Kobe had already started feuding, right? Um, Shaq came in uh, into the season out of shape, not ready to play basketball at a high level. As you know who Kobe Bryant is, he was extremely upset by that, disappointed in that, as was Phil Jackson. Shaq came off slumping, shooting below 50% from the field, which is not very good considering the center. And his free throw shooting was less than 20%. Um, Shaq then made a comment saying that, oh, last season we went 67 and 15. You know, everybody was happy. The city was jumping, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're 23 and 11. So you figure it out. That was a shot at Kobe Bryant, being that Kobe Bryant, who was ready to play, came out swinging, right? Kobe was damn, if he wasn't leading, he was a leader in points per game at the NBA early in the season. He finished averaging like 20, over 29 points per game. Uh, something like six rebounds, five assists, something along those lines. And then Shaq basically blamed it on Kobe trying to lead the team his way, being more assertive uh, in the offense. Um, yeah, and Shaq was like, why would you want to change that? Sounds like it would be for selfish reasons, something along those lines. And then Kobe responded to him saying like, hey, the, the roster isn't the same as it was last year. The roster has changed. And with change, you have to change yourself and kind of go with the flow, evolve as things present themselves. Um, also, during that season, you know, Phil Jackson even chimed in calling both Shaq and Kobe juvenile. And uh, uh, Phil Jackson even catered, started catering more to Shaq because Shaq is very sensitive. And if you guys know Shaq, even to this day and age, he's extremely sensitive. Every season, Shaq's getting in it about with somebody about something because he's, he feels some type of way. Shaq is weird like that, man. I, I don't know why he's like that. And he maintained the criticism on Kobe and eased up off Shaq because of his sensitivity. Long story short, they were pretty much feuding past the All-Star break because I remember watching the All-Star game. Um, Shaq was actually the greatest All-Star game of all time was the 2001 NBA All-Star game. If you haven't seen it, you need to go watch it. Um... And Shaq was on the bench, hurt. And, you know, they kind of, they were still feuding at the time because I remember the reporter was asking them about it, et cetera, et cetera. And there was some commentary during the All-Star game about the feuding. Long story short, the playoffs come around and as it is well documented, the Lakers went 15-1, and one, only losing one game, which would be game one of the NBA Finals. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I was so pissed off that they lost because I wanted them to go uh, fifteen and zero. Um, and what it, and what I believe is the most impressive playoff run in NBA history, even better than the Warriors sixteen and one. Remember back then you only played three games, or it only it was the best of five instead of the best of seven in round one back in the day. That's why I was fifteen and one, not sixteen and one. Um, Kobe Bryant absolutely dominated those playoffs, as did Shaq. But here's the problem. People really forget how great Kobe was in those playoff series. And they just say, they make it seem like Kobe rode Shaq's coattails, which was never, ever the case. Kobe Bryant held his own significantly on both ends of the court. And people will throw stats around and try to diminish Kobe Bryant's playoff success. And you look at the numbers, and they're like, well, look at these numbers for Kobe's playoff career. But what they're also doing is that they're taking the first couple years where Kobe really didn't get any playing time. And those numbers were so 
horrible because of the lack of minutes that they hurt his overall averages. Right. But when you look from the point Kobe really came on the scene and started flourishing, those playoff numbers are astronomical, even in the years that he played with Shaq. All right. Let's put that into context, people. Put that into context, especially after their first championship. Leading into this one here that we're talking about, this playoff run, Kobe really, really came into his own really came into his own and still one of his problems was that the triangle offense was holding him back and it doesn't really showcase everything that he can do which he was absolutely correct being in the triangle offense with Shaquille O'Neal as the focal point is going to limit what you can do and that was one of Kobe's gripes so like I said for this playoff series the 2000-2001 series uh, for the entire run Kobe Bryant averaged 29.4 points 7.3 rebounds, 6.1 assists, 1.6 steals on uh, almost 49% field goal percentage, which is absolutely incredible considering how tough the defenses were back then, especially back then when you could be more physical uh, along with playing more defense. He shot uh, about 32% from field goal range, which is actually pretty good considering that he was only taking two three-point attempts per game. Unlike in today's era, you know, players might hit, you know, th these players will take 10 plus three-pointers a game. Some games. Most players take around seven three-pointers a game. Players to note of, notable players. They take a lot of three-pointers per game. So while they, m they may miss their first two, eventually they'll start hitting. Back in the day, you only took two. You only took two. So either you was going 0 for, 0 for 2, 1 for 2, or 2 for 2. And the fact that Kobe shot 32% on only two attempts a game is pretty good when you think about it. All right. So in the first round, the Lakers uh, played the Blazers. Best out of five. The Lakers finished the season with a 56-26 and 26 record. Um, which would be the second best record in the Western Conference after the San Antonio Spurs. Their first round matchup was against the uh, Portland Trail Blazers, like I said, and they finished the season with the 50 and 32 record. So as you can see, the Western Conference was stacked with 50 win teams. Kobe Bryant actually has more victories against 50 plus win teams in the playoffs against more than anybody in NBA history. Kobe owns that record. People don't talk about that. And the Lakers division alone there were four teams with 50 plus wins in their own division. It was stacked and it was always stacked for most of Kobe's career, pretty much all of Kobe's career. All right, so they played the Blazers 50 win team. Of course, as we know, they swept them 3-0. Kobe Bryant averaged uh, 25 points a game, 4.3 rebounds a game, 7.7 .7 assists a game and 2.3 steals a game. Extremely assertive on defense. Even though still show up in the box score, Kobe Bryant was also a lockdown physical defender, and a lot of what he would do wouldn't even show up in the box score. All right, so strong outing by Kobe being Bryant. Now, in the second round, Kobe Bryant turned up. Kobe Bryant turned up. 35 points per game against the Kings. Let me go back. Hold on. They played the Kings. I'm getting ahead of myself. Second round, they played the Sacramento Kings. Right? Who had a 55 and 27 record. Kobe averaged 35 points, 9 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 1.4 steals, and even had an epic game, an absolutely epic game of 48 points and 16 rebounds. People don't understand. Like back then, especially if you was playing in the Western Conference, the teams were so damn good that it was harder to get to the finals than actually win the finals. The teams that you would play in the first and second round were probably better than the Eastern Conference team you would face in the finals. So instead of sliding, sliding Kobe in his career for saying, oh, well, he didn't really play nobody in the finals. The teams really, really weren't that good. Yeah, but what about the first two or three teams he had to play to get there? Because because two or maybe even three of those teams were championship contenders. So I don't want to hear that. Kobe Bryant absolutely dominated that second round. Outperformed Shaq even. Maybe it's debatable. All right, now we're moving on to the third round. And you know who's waiting in the third round? 
that boy Tim Duncan and company who had the best record in the entire NBA with a 58 and 24 record waiting for the Lakers. No way. They said no way the Lakers were going to sweep the Spurs. Not possible. They swept the Trailblazers. They swept the Kings. But this is Tim Duncan and the Spurs, baby. Ain't no way in hell. Best record. They got Timmy D. They got Greg Popovich. Lakers ain't sweeping them. Well, guess what? The Lakers swept them. And it was an epic series at that. Against the Spurs in the conference finals, Kobe Bryant was still turning up. Kobe averaged 33 points per game, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, and 1.5 steals. And you can throw in a game where he had 45 points and 10 rebounds. Absolutely phenomenal. The Lakers were ripping and running through everybody. Kobe was on top of his game, as was Shaq. And then we move on into the finals after the sweep of the Spurs where the Lakers will meet up with the Philadelphia 76ers, led by Allen Iverson, who on the season, actually in the playoffs, Iverson averaged 32.9 points, six assists, and four rebounds, with uh, Philly actually having the same record that the Lakers had, 56 and 26. All right, as we all know, we know how that series started out, the infamous game, of um, Allen Iverson draining the shot on Ty Lue and walking over him and a very clutch performance by Allen Iverson to steal game one against the Lakers. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. I think AI had 48 points that game, if I remember correctly, but he had a 40 plus point game if it wasn't 48. I know that for sure. And really made some big plays down the stretch to give the uh, Philadelphia 76ers that victory. And the Philadelphia 76ers led by Allen Iverson did the un unthinkable, did the improbable and took the first game away from the Lakers. But what they did by doing that is they woke up the beast. They woke up the beast and did they. After that, the Lakers would essentially knock them out and take the next four games against the Philadelphia 76ers. Kobe Bryant dialed down his scoring a bit for the finals. It really didn't have to do anything to do with the type of defenses that were played or whatnot. He dialed down and uh, definitely took on a more defensive assignment as well by having to guard Allen Iverson from time to time. He didn't guard him for the whole game. All right, Kobe Bryant averaged 24.6 points, 8 rebounds, and 5.8 assists, throwing 1.4 steals in the finals to win the championship. Kobe Bryant's numbers were absolutely incredible during this entire stretch, but somehow he, he rode Shaq's coattails to a championship. That was not the case. Kobe Bryant was arguably had just as much responsibility in the outcome of that playoff series as did Shaquille O'Neal. Let's call it what it is. Let's cut the nonsense out. In fact, if if the NBA Finals MVP was based on your entire playoff run, not just the finals, they might have been co-MVP, Kobe and Shaq. Very well could have been. An absolutely incredible and dominating run by Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers. I don't think that record is ever going to be topped in our lifetime. The Warriors had the best chance of doing it, and they ended up dropping one game to the Cavaliers. And I would have been, I would have been less impressed with the with the Warriors. Even if the Warriors did pull it off, it would not have been as impressive as what Shaq and Kobe did through that Western Conference not having a super de duper super de duper super team against teams with 50 55 56 you know win records solid teams from beginning to end with no super 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 team so yeah incredible run and i don't think we will ever see that duplicated again i could be wrong but it's going to be hard it's going to be hard to top that. I would love to see it as long as it's not at the expense of my Lakers. All right, so what I got here is we're going to take a look at some highlights. This is going to be a lengthy video. You have been warned. It's going to be a lengthy video. And we're going to see most of, if not all, of Kobe Bryant's buckets 
from the beginning of the playoff run to the end of the playoff run and take a look at his skill and his dominance out there on the court. All right, the video has been provided by none other than the greatest NBA YouTuber out there, Maximilian. Good pass to Horace Grant. This is game one against the Portland Trail Blazers. Good switch to the left. Strong finish at the rack. Good body control. Catches it, hangs in the air, off the glass. Let's go. Kevin Garnett, they lose the first game in San Antonio, so the candidates right now have uh, That should have been a, a foul. Stepped in his landing space. Good pump fake. Beautifully done. Lasers have missed their last six shots. Kobe Bryant, yes. The mid-range was always clicking. He's over there barking with Stacey Augman. Beautiful fadeaway, Kobe style. You know, I find it funny when people say, casuals say, Kobe Bryant didn't develop the mid-range game and, and the fadeaway and the killer jump shot until later in his career. I'm like, you clearly never watched Kobe play. He implemented that part of this game very early on. Very early on. This wasn't something that he just started working on as he got older. At a young age, he was posting up, hitting the fadeaway in the mid-range jumper with regularity. Beautiful move to the rack. Kobe has such great quickness, but all he's got great body balance and incredible body balance. Playing with the two fouls, John hits us on the court versus Sabonis. Well, particularly as you indicated with Shaq, because now Shaq is dropping back off of him and cuts down the drive. It don't matter how many defenders. Beautiful move. Beautiful floater. Highly skilled player. Absolutely incredible. Because he plays that defense. He plays defense like a linebacker out there. And uh, just a great performance. He also had five. His ability to control his body no matter what speed he's going at and finish with grace is incredible. All right, here we are, game three in Portland. How do you? Scotty Pippen tripping. He gave Kobe too much space. Sticking with the play. Spin move. A little bit of a finger roll, maybe. Strong to the basket. None but net. But, oh, beautiful spin left on the fadeaway. Moving without the basketball. Great over the shoulder past the Shaq. Kobe and Shaq had some great setups. Right, we are now in round two versus the Sacramento Kings. Buckets. Thank you, Jim. Christy right on Brian again. First shot of the second half. Nothing you could do about that, man. The, the dude has practiced every shot in the bulk, man. There was no point on the floor where Kobe Bryant ever felt uncomfortable. Mm, beautiful double clutch reverse. Do it again, Mamba. Do it again. Good feed from Shaq. Good rebound with the left hand. Good finish. Being aggressive in the in, in the in the post, man. He saw the double double team coming, so he spun the other way. Ooh. My word. Stop it, Kobe. He needs to try to create some offense and collect the rebound. 
Crossover to the left, back to the right. Shaq has 11. Kobe for two. Maybe he'll start playing defense. So Rick Adelman. He'll have so much respect for him. And maybe he'll box in. See, I mean, at a young age, man. That was already a developed part of his game. Good spin move. Corkscrew shot, which gives the Lakers a nine-point lead. Well, Kobe could do this in the open court. Any of the offensive boards with four guys or three guys. Takes the screen from Shaq, hangs in the air a little bit, releases the shot. Good strong take to the rack. Beautifully done. Good bounce pass by Shaq. I like it. Shaq is a very underrated passer. Beautiful fadeaway over Bobby Jackson. He walked into him while he was fading back. Lakers are shooting 38%. Here's Brian who had a great Dude, he's gonna eat he's gonna eat Bobby Jackson all day. He's gonna destroy Bobby Jackson. Oh, hell of a dunk. Hell of a dunk. Jumping backwards. Look at this. Look at this. That's a hard dunk to pull off. Bang. Gets his own rebound. Hangs in the air. Wow. While his body was contorted. Like I said, he actually do, he he absolutely roasted the Kings, man. Crossover gathers Duncan on Vladi Divac. Crossover gather. Sit down, boy. This Tomahawk boy. Off two feet, boy. Good putback. That should have been a foul. Through three defenders, he caught the last two defenders. Great floater. One, two's trailing. There's a third. There's a fourth and a fifth. <laughs> Dude is a monster, man. Good pass by Robert Ory. Kobe Bryant actually shoots a very good percentage from three when left wide open. Baseline fadeaway. Killing him. And one. <laughs> Slava Medvedenko. It's a chance for a three-point play, but early in the year, I'm not so sure we saw. Here is 109, the Kings, 107. Beautiful move. Spins back into the lane. And then finishes, look at this. Great use of the backboard. All right, now we are in the um, Western Conference Finals versus the San Antonio Spurs. Who had the best record in the NBA? So Kobe goes glass. Goes, but Harris kept forcing him out. There's Kobe Bryant. Great stutter step there to freeze the opponents and finish strong at, uh, on the left side. Good body control. 
because he kind of collided with Duncan midair a little bit. Look at that grace. Buckets. Come get these buckets. Sean Elliott was getting smoked. Hangs in the air. The double clutch. Mid-range day. Good pass down the shack. Sit down, boy. I'm dunking over everybody. Old David Robinson wants some too. Come get it, baby. Everybody. And how about this for just tremendous offense? Kobe Bryant right to both David Robinson and Tim Duncan. I remember that. I remember that left hand dunk versus Timmy. Nah, it didn't matter. Kobe dunked on everybody. Kobe didn't care. Kobe would dunk on everybody. Sit down, boy. Kobe dunked on Duncan like six times in his career. He put Duncan on hello, hello posters. Of course he's playing at a different level, but people try to act like he wasn't. Like he got carried in the playoffs. The revisionist history on Kobe Bryant is absolutely nuts. How people try to make his career seem less than what it was. Blows my mind. I'm like, clearly you never watched him play if you think that. Because that thought wouldn't even cross your mind. Beautiful fadeaway. Sit down, boy. Catch this, catch this hang time, baby. Oh, I remember this put back. God damn. Sit down, boy. Twenty-two years old, y'all. Twenty-two years old. Twenty-two. Twenty-two years old. Looking like a savvy veteran out there. A screen by Grant and two from Kobe Bryant. Just past the three minute mark here in the first quarter. Bryant again. Two of two, Kobe Bryant. I'll tell you what, David, if he makes four or five in a row, they'll make an adjustment and start trapping. Careening off of one player, then another, and then buckets, baby. Home. He missed it, but I think that was the right idea. Robinson is on the bench. Kobe Bryant. Unstoppable. I think you got Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant as the best um, mid-air body control specialists. Nothing like Kobe and Mike. Nobody. Once they got in the air, they could hang, hang there, do things, move their body. It's beautiful. Great pass. Dropping the sledgehammer for two. The two-headed monster. Eve to go help. He'll drop it off and passes extremely well wide in the air. I don't know if people realize how hard that shot is. It's like, it is an extremely difficult shot. Extremely important for the Spurs. Lakers by one. Kobe Bryant over Daniels. Right there it is. And Kobe Bryant now with 23. 
Bryant, who's got 25 points. Great pass. Oh, that's wet, dude. I told you, Kobe on open threes. It's lethal, man. Clutch buckets, man. Clutch buckets on top of that. Antonio Daniels furious that no one from the weak side is rotating out to his man. Kobe knocks down the Clutch buckets. Has all day to shoot it. I mean, that's a, I don't understand that at all. Foul trouble could be early, Mark, for Robinson and Duncan. Kobe Bryant for three. He had been spectacular, and he kicks it out for the open shot. Here's Kobe. Kobe moves on a right of I'm get the work. Game three, baby. Ooh, between the legs, spin move, alley to Shaq. All in one motion, between the legs, spin. Look at this. Get off me, man. Finds his partner, Shaq. They want to get him off to a great start. And how better to do that than give him a gimme? Get off me. Kobe got the strap. And so did I. Shaq is now have to adjust. Bryant. Oh, clean that up. Mm. Sit down, boy. Sit down. Good pass. Yeah, look at Rick Fox dunking the basketball. I didn't see that often. Just put a body on him. Too weak. Too weak. Twenty point game. Best record in the league. God damn. Me and Shaq had the same reaction. Look at this dunk. I don't even know how he reached it. Oh, good move. trigger that you feel bang baby bang in this great play between those play points and it's Kobe so by my math shot they have to come up with a rebound Spurs do get back Kobe accelerates buckets baby and I think part of the philosophy was to get David Robinson involved early Kobe Bryant involved early seeing the ball go through the net I remember that dunk. I remember that dunk. I went crazy. Caught it over here, brought it back to two hands, gammed it. Look at this. Give me that. I remember that dunk. Dude, I would have loved to see this version of Kobe playing today's league. The dude averaged 40, man. I don't even doubt it. He'd average 40 in today's NBA. Hell, he averaged, he was averaging like 36, 37 at one point in the 2005, 2006 season before he dumbed down his scoring. Look at that. Do you know how hard that shot is? Spin left with three defenders crowding in your space. Oh my god, amazing footwork. How did he even get through that? Well, I think it's great. I, I, I'm the one who's uh, encouraging him. Oh my god, the hang time. It certainly was helpful for his head when there was all that tension going on between Kobe and Kobe. 
Even that girl, she's just like, what the hell? He ain't playing no games, baby. No games. How did he, that, you know how hard that floater was? <laughs> to the finger roll. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, AI, what you got, baby? Get that out of here. Get that out of here, AI. Rick Fox misses the three, but look at Shaq. Just powering. Shout out to Allen Iverson. Stole that game. Well deserved. That could have been a foul, too. He walked into a space after he jumped. All right, so the Lakers have lost that game. And like I said, they woke up. They woke up the monsters. Kobe came out firing. Firing, you hear me? Spin, I knew that was coming. A great pass to Shaq. Spin. That's just, that's just being stronger, man. Oh, good fire. Good pass he fired in there. Damn, Cole, don't rip your arm off, bro. Don't rip your arm off. You're chasing the game. Is he right? Well, I think there was a certain stretch there where we're overly aggressive. Uh, I think our motion. Kobe, thank you. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. The Philadelphia 76ers were either the best defensive team in the league or, or one of the best defensive teams in the league uh, this season. Matumbo had a lot to do with that. Oh, he is ripping his arm off on his tomahawk dunks. Dude, he brought that joint way back here. All right. So the Philly, um, the Philly crowd got really toxic against Kobe Bryant in this series and for a large part of his career afterwards, especially in 2002, because Kobe made a comment in the newspaper saying that they he absolutely wanted to rip the hearts out of uh, Philadelphia. Even though that's his hometown, went to school out there, Lower Marion. Good pump fake. He was kind of hanging to see what Matumbo would do so he could react to it. Hell of a hard shot. Yeah, you can't play better defense than that. Kobe Bryant was so ridiculously good. You could play perfect defense and still get rocked. And still get jayed up on. Aaron McKee played that perfectly. That's great defense by Raja Bell. Splits the defense. Takes on the Kembe Matumbo. Get out, boy. 
Ooh, I just got energized off that block. Flush that one straight down. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And if you guys remember, back then, the playoff format was 2-4-2. Two, two. Not 2-2, two, 1-1-1. Two, one, one, one. So Philadelphia is going to get their three home games in a row. Open three, baby. He ain't missing that. No way. There you have it, folks. Was that not a beautiful display of basketball? Was that not just... Mwah, from the defense from the scoring, all angles, all parts of the floor, no matter what kind of defense they played, the dude was so supremely skilled and so high above the rest, it didn't matter. He practiced every shot in the book. There wasn't a place you could push him. There wasn't a position you could put him in where he was uncomfortable or didn't think he could hit the shot. He had the, he had the highest confidence you could ever see in a player. No matter how bad of a game he was having, he always knew the next shot would go in. That's the most, that's, that's supreme confidence. Like I said, the dude had some epic games during this entire run. Absolutely torched the entire Western Conference full of elite teams. The Kings were a championship contending team. Kobe, 35 points on them. The Spurs, best record in the league, a championship contending team. 33-7-7 on them. The Port Portland Trailblazers, we're still a 50-win team. Two. Not, no slide against them. So, stop the nonsense about Kobe was garbage in the playoffs while he was with Shaq or he was subpar in the finals or whatever the narrative they are driving these days that Shaq clearly just drove the clearly, decisively, and Kobe just rode his coattails. Please stop this nonsense. Kobe's my favorite player, obviously, but I call it how it is. When Kobe has bad games, I call it. When he doesn't play well, I call it. I, I, I point out his, his deficiencies as well when it's time for it. But I would do this with any player. Provide context. And and not these, these false narratives that like to go around. Let's call it what it is, man. And I'm not making this stuff up. You can see all the stuff is here. So if you want to know the truth, you can always look for it. But when people get in these debates and try to tear this guy's legacy down, they conveniently forget this stuff or skew the statistics to make it seem less than what it was. But if anybody was out there watching during that time, y'all know what the deal was. And we here to shed light on this and everything else. And everything else. Appreciate you guys. Let me know if you remember this iconic playoff run. Did you think back then that the Lakers would go on to rip off this amazing 15-1 record? I would love to hear your opinion. And another shout out to Zedi or Zeddy Perry the fourth. Appreciate you for the recommendation. Like, comment, and subscribe, folks, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Make sure you hit the bell. We out, baby.